Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the first lady, Erica and Jonathan. Much love, the hello. Smith and Bailey team and Terry Smith. Hi. You're Akashic Records genius. And we're going to talk a bit about mindfulness because I guess yesterday, Terry and I, we were having this conversation about just being overwhelmed with tasks. Because I guess I could look around my house and I could see like 15 things that I could do right now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even know where to start. And I, I, and then sometimes you can feel so guilty just walking past something. But, but then I think over time, what I learned is that I have to like prioritize the most important thing that I need to get done is this. And so I'm learning, but then I still feel a little bit of guilt, even when it comes to being tired and taking a nap. I was talking to someone yesterday about that, where I see some of my friends getting illnesses and things because they're, they're ignoring their body and just wanting to keep grinding and, and doing tasks and not nurturing themselves. So you remember more of the conversation than I did because you had to remind me, Terry. So, well, I, and you know, I think what happens is we get so overwhelmed by things and they just, there's so much weight on it that a lot of times we get so um, almost, I'm going to use the word quote depressed, but I don't mean it in that sense. It is that feeling of being overwhelmed and not being able to, and we procrastinate is because gosh, that pile of dishes is getting bigger and bigger. And it's like, if I don't look at it, <laughs> but I, I don't have to deal with it <laughs> <laughs> or, or that closet that falls down on you. Yeah. And um, then I think what happens is we create more anxiety around it because it, we just are, are avoiding it. So sometimes it's a matter of just like, uh, there's a beautiful video about washing dishes is, you know, you just take one dish and you wash that dish and you let the water flow around it and you let the water dance with it. And then you put it down and then you take another dish. And if we take the moment to just be with that process, we are, it's all little moments of stuff. When we see a big pile of stuff, it can be overwhelming. But if you take it to the point of just being mindful with being in that present moment and just, I'm going to wash this dish right now. Mm -hmm. well, and it can, we can then make headway and just sort of like be in that space. Is that, um, Oh, Jonathan, if you want to chime in and answer that too, because I guess I hear people say that when we're in action all the time, we're in the masculine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that, what would you say about that? I mean, I guess that would be, there's a certain structure that is being presented when we're moving forward in, in that constant motion. I mean, I think... I think it, the feminine would be more um, intuitive or uh, that ignition of creation and then going through the process and how things structure and how things are presented um, brings that masculine element in there, right? Um, coming back to all of that is like uh, to like walking by things and um being pulled or, or saying, oh, I don't want to do this now, or, you know, there's, there's signs and synchronicities of, of information that, you know, you're supposed to connect with, and there's so much of it, and you're like, oh, I'll do it later, but then it's like, you go to do something else, you're like, I, 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 you have that feeling, or I want to try to do this so I can, you know, get things rolling, and then it's like that, 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 that pull, or that that connection that comes back again, it kind of highlights itself that okay, I should take my time and connect with what is what that information is or what I'm being pulled to do. Um, and it's about being present and and feeling your senses of what your body's feeling and 
in those present moments, um, like go back to the, the, the hands washing and everything. It's like, yeah, in that moment, okay, what do you feel? What do you smell? What do you, what's, what's the, what's the, the taste? Do you, are you tasting things or remind in remembrance? Um, what do you hear, right? There's multiple ways. What's the water sound like when it's splashing around, right? That just brings you deeper into that present moment. Um, and yeah. I like that because, you know, in just talking about this, we're literally talking about balancing your masculine and feminine, right? There's the part of you that needs the plan and then a part of you that needs to do. But then another thing that I just realized while you were talking is when we're doing the dishes, do we finish? Because if we're so caught up in everything else that needs to happen and the phone rang and, and I'm still cooking, like maybe I don't finish the dishes, I don't drain the water and I don't wash around the sink and I don't maybe dry. You know what I mean? Because we're, we're ne not completing things maybe because we're so busy looking mm -hmm. at all the things. When you would have a lot more joy if you can actually just complete the one task. Mm -hmm. The satisfaction in the completeness so this is like, ah, in my head, I'm also thinking about the idea that, you know, some people say, oh, well, I sweep and mop on Wednesdays. And I'm a person that struggles with giving myself a schedule because <laughs> then I feel locked in. <laughs> like, did you, anybody have anything to say about that? Like, Terry, okay. Oh, I was going to say, sometimes I sweep at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes at seven o'clock in the morning and it's just like oh I think I need to sweep the floor and so when we have when we schedule things you do it as a task and it's not it's not being a mindful thing so when I sweep the floor at 11 o'clock at night I look and I say oh darn <laughs> it's crumbs on the floor and so I do that and there's an appreciation after I've done it that I've completed something right? Mm -hmm. That it's done. This is what caught my attention at this moment. I need to do it. And so I did it. And it wasn't a task. It was a joy in a sense is because now I can appreciate that my haven't got crumbs on the floor. But a lot of times when we have tasks, it's like you don't appreciate what you've done. You know, how many we had to always plan ahead. Gee, I remember growing up and Monday morning was wash day and everything had to be done and that way. And it was, it was done in rote. <laughs> and, and it was, so when we do things because we have to do it, then it becomes a task and it becomes a chore and it becomes an unpleasant thing. And so, but when we do it because we're motivated to do it in a way, then it then it becomes not so much of a task. You know, it becomes something you want to you, you don't mind doing. I like to see it as a, a remembrance. So you create a list of what things need to be done within the week. And then okay, like Terry was saying, you may see the crumbs on Tuesday. And you'd be like, okay. Up oh, is Tuesday. And you have that feeling. It's like you've got to do it. So it, instead of putting it, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or this the day, this time, or this. Um, so it gives, we were talking earlier, it kind of gives you a, a direction of what needs to be done, but there's a fluidity with flexibility it. there. Yeah. It's um, interesting too that you hit the part of having to do something because it's on the list. Because Lisa and I had a conversation about that, about getting to do something or having to do something. I, I, I don't know if there was another way you could say it, but it's, it's like, oh, I get to do it today mm -hmm. Ooh, versus I have to do it today. And um, yeah, there's this satisfaction seeing the satisfaction in certain things 
rather than having it pile up as a burden. You and can, uh, yeah. we, we were definitely talking about the fine line between procrastination versus prioritizing. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you really do just need a break. Yeah. And I, I read this meme yesterday. It says, girlfriend, you can do everything. You're right. You can, but you don't have to do it all. <laughs> but you don't have to. <laughs> I like well, that. We live in a world where we have so many have to, have to, have to. And it's always, and that list doesn't doesn't change, right? And so we are burdened by that uh, having to do all of these things. And it's it's a continual process of having to do it. And it's like, wait a minute, who created that have to list, right? We have to do this. Why? And maybe sometimes we have to just say like, well, to heck with that. Yeah. <laughs> have to do any of that. I want to do this today. And as a person that had anxiety, extreme anxiety over tasks, it becomes well, my, my rationalization is now, well, what's going to happen if, if, it don't, if that doesn't get done? Is the sky really going to fall? And so all these things, I think, have come along to help me with the self-talk to get myself in the mindset. Right. right. That everything won't fall apart. The universe won't fall apart if I do this first. So let's take a hot bath. Let's hot bath. <laughs> That's the let's thing, right? Let's get right. us some water. Yep. Mm -hmm. And get these incense ready. We can meditate on that thought. But I'm just giving people the heads up. Let's go ahead and get this candle. And you guys can finish whatever you want to say. But yeah, let's take a chill pill. You know, I'll just, I'll finish what I was saying. Well, come back to it. The space after you've done cleaning up as well will will have a different vibration. It will resonate higher and it'll be in joy because it likes to be attended and being in that space of, of mindfully connecting with it, right? And so, you know, it, it, it goes in many layers. And so you come back to like a feng shui, right? And, and how you would uh, put things around your room, certain colors around. Uh, and so keeping up and, and reorganizing or just listening to what you feel. You may, okay, you may re reorganize your stuff every month or every other month. There's some place, there's, there's some people and some, there's some um, systems that, you know, you're supposed to do that every uh, every six months or every four months just to kind of give you a new shift the energy around, right? So. Yeah, is that Lisa, Lisa Combo or how do you say her name? Oh, um, Lisa. <laughs> is it Lisa? It's Combo. I know it's. Uh, oh, what's her name? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> She's off. Uh, she's she Japanese, right? Japanese, Lisa Marie Kondo. Is that who you guys are talking about? Marie Kondo, Kondo. That's it. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, we were gonna make. We were gonna make you participate, girl. That's <laughs> <laughs> Lisa. Lisa McClinton in the background. So, yay! She gets to hang out with us live. <laughs> well, and I would like to add to the uh, have to get to. Yes. Like even when you're talking about doing dishes, you know, say it to yourself, I have to do the dishes. It's a responsibility. It's a burden. I get to do the dishes as more of a looking forward to. And I find that if I get to do the dishes, then I get to have a clean counter and clean space afterwards. And even when I engage in the task itself, like Terry was saying, as I'm washing the dishes, I'm noticing the water. I'm noticing the bubbles. But if I have to do it, I'm going to be grumbling about having to do the dishes. Mm -hmm. And I get to relax even better because I know I have clean dishes. Versus when I'm sitting over here and I'm like, Ugh, 
I'm thinking I'm relaxing, but I'm not because I'm still kind of agitated that I still have these dishes. <laughs> Just like this, this chair. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to bow out. Okay. And then you got your 17 instruments ready. <laughs> I do. <Absolutely>. Okay. <laughs> and we'll uh, get started. While we're waiting for Jonathan, you, Jonathan's going to start us with some breathing um, exercise to get us going and before we get into our visualization. I'll just take a few cleansing breaths. It's nice and easy. Close your eyes. Just observe the feeling, the temperature of the air that flows through your lungs and allow it to allow that area to just grow bigger and grow bigger. Inhaling deeper and deeper and deeper. Just allow your body to be encapsulated with this pure field of life, of this breath, your breath, this moment. Just bring your awareness to your heart. Continue breathing. Just observe. Now inhale, allowing that energy, that flow, that air to move from your stomach to your chest, to your head and pause at the top of your head Allow it to fountain down like a waterfall, like a fountain down around your body, through your body, down to your feet. Inhale, feet, hips, stomach, chest, head, Pause and let it flow all the way down the body. Exhale, head, chest, stomach, feet running right into the the ground, to the earth. And bring that wave, that flow back. Inhale, back up. Pause at the head, just feel the motion, the swaying, the swirling. It could be doing it either or of those. Just exhale slowly, feeling this swirling, the spiraling energy, air, exhale, this force of life moving down, just pausing within the heart space. And just see your body being brushed by the waves of your breath, toes to your head, The waves are just brushing and as you grow deeper, relaxed in this present moment, nourishing 
each cell for this journey to be here and now mindfully. So now just feel that flow of breath moving through you. And just notice the gentle waves that you're feeling. And now imagine that you're floating along a stream. And you may have a little boat or you may be on an inner tube, but you're floating on a gentle stream that's just winding. And as you're floating down the stream, you get pulled in towards the shore. And as you get pulled to one side, there might be a clump of branches that has just kind of pulled you aside. Just think of this as a task that you need to do. We can get caught up in this area or we can free ourselves. Just look at this task and just see how you can free yourself from being pulled in. Do you let go of a branch? Do you just let go of one thing that frees you? How do you look at this? Can you look at it from a point of feeling a sense of empowerment by just removing it and removing yourself? And just let it go now. Just free yourself and allow yourself to just move down the stream. And as you continue your journey along the flow, there's another area that comes up. You can spend time getting caught up in the debris. Or you find the way that allows you to flow on. And as you continue your journey along this stream, you see many nooks and crannies that have debris in it. It's easy to get pulled in. But if you stay along with the flow, you can continue 
down the stream. Pulling those twigs out of the way to make your path along the flow easier. And now the stream becomes a little pool. And this pool is just a place where you can rest. Sun is shining upon you. You can feel yourself just gathering the energy. And you gently swirl around the pool. And again, it takes you down the current. Now, just observing as you continue your flow. All along the stream, there are all kinds of tasks, all kinds of little diversions. But your journey is to flow down the stream. And as you continue your flow, you see before you a vast body of liquid light, of liquid gold. And as you get to the end of the flow of the stream, you come into this liquid gold. And you become part of this liquid gold as it fills you and every cell. Feel it nurturing you and replenishing you. You feel every cell being filled with this liquid light. Now, start to walk back towards the shore.
And as you walk back, you feel your body being replenished and rejuvenated. having left behind those things that were holding you back. And feeling nurtured and rejuvenated. You find yourself walking back from this lake of liquid gold and walking along the path of the stream. Moving back now into this reality starting to feel your physical being, starting to feel the movement in your toes and your hands. Feeling a sense of lightness. Lightness in your body, lightness in your heart bringing a smile to your face. Being grateful for being. Grateful for this moment. And just becoming aware now of the breath as you bring it in through your nostrils, filling your lungs and releasing it. You can move your shoulders and your neck. And take another deep breath in, coming fully back into your body and into this now moment. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and welcome back. That was hard to come out of. <laughs> and at one moment you were silent and I was like, oh no, they're gone. <laughs> Cause I thought I fell asleep. Well, I, I was out and I was just like, are we still on? <laughs> <laughs> I try not to make it too much of a pause, but sometimes you just need that little well, moment. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how long I was gone, so I don't know. <laughs> We're in a place in no time. <laughs> I know. I, I always find myself feeling like, oh, I don't want to stop. Like, it feels like I was just like, oh, this is such a good place. But, you know, I really noticed a huge difference in where, in, in Jonathan's relaxation. Like, I felt the relaxation. And then when your voice came across, it was like a cool, breezy, like, feeling it was very relaxing but it was like very cool all of a sudden Ugh. different frequencies in our voice yeah our voice carries frequencies yeah we might have to put you on like repeat for an hour just like take that thing and go like shh, just put it on repeat like oh <laughs> that's really nice yeah it's, I, I think, you know, we, we get so overwhelmed. Sometimes you just need to go in that flow and just mm -hmm. 
and just you know start just let release some of the things that i mean they're we're always going to find things that are going to pull us aside mm -hmm. <sighs> And just go in the flow you know we get that we get that saying go with the flow yeah just flow, just flow. Mm -hmm. i know and that mind i think what did, there was one part you said earlier about um like how you get the mindfulness and you want to do the thing at that moment for some reason that always hits me at midnight and i'm like <laughs> let's start doing stuff when it's time to go to bed <laughs> and i gotta put this on instead so that was really great did you have any more thoughts jonathan um yeah it's just and i think it's coming to about not having those things not pull us and it's about you know having certain positions and places where maybe put a cloth over them so you don't see them every time right and then you don't have that trigger right um i mean you know i i've had those there's a adhd so i was thinking i would be always trying to do things all at the same time and same thing you would be you just can't keep up because you have so much stuff that so much stimulation of possibility of things to do that needed to be done essentially but it's just to really you know give the each give each task a moment like hold like maybe put them in a in a space that they're not seen but just when you connect with one task you're doing that moment and we're weaving in that moment right um and you can do it simply down to eating supper, or eating lunch or breakfast or whatever you're consuming. And that's all you're doing, right? In that moment. So that was a really good um, uh, practice for me because we have to eat all the time. It's just really being present with connecting with that food, you know, before you start. And then as you do that, just enhances and you have that and how does that food make you feel go through all the steps what do you smell how does it smell taste etc this is making me think that you know what did she say um well, somebody told me said if if your house is your mess your life is a mess and i'm not saying that to people but someone told me this one time and uh, it makes me think yeah. that I would definitely like to talk to somebody who's an expert on declutter, because if your house is cluttered, your mind is cluttered. Because I, I noticed for me, like it's the posters, notes, and, and you leave things out because you're afraid you're going to forget and you're not going to get back to it. But it's like, no, there is a place for everything and everything in its place. And maybe when you get to that point, that also will help you relax, too. Oh, definitely. I'm thinking about that. Finding I mean, someone to talk about that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, hundred percent. Like it was at Lisa Marie condo, and then another feng shui, and I believe there's other, there's many other types of mm. of similarity across uh, multiple belief system. But you know, from experiences of hair, just hearing where people are, and you go talk to somebody that's a hoarder. And where they're at and how how condensed their minds are uh that and they're they're in dis-ease majority of them are have major diseases that they're in that space so i mean and a lot of them the stories that i heard that they were on palliative care so you know and you're like, oh, I wonder why. And you can't open the door to get into the house. You can open the door this much to get into the door. Like, what's going on here? You got every got lots of pets running around, but not pets. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, there's some suffering. So right. definitely that's mm -hmm. something uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna find someone so we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Any last thoughts, Terry? You know, I think maybe maybe we just have to be 
Just take a breath inside and just like, what, what is it that I need to do? And when, and just start to, to do whatever it is you need at that moment. And if it's like, you know, I can, if I got a bunch of paperwork to do, I just sort of <laughs> avoid it. But you know what, as soon as you start picking up this paper and doing one thing, then it becomes, there becomes a flow. And it's just, you start to dismantle things. And so if you can start with that flow and you realize you have the power to, to um, dismantle things, then you just do it. And you just, and it starts with just doing one little task. It's like having a stack of dishes, just washing <laughs> one dish, just being present with that one little thing that you're doing. And then before you know it, you know, you've got a garbage bin full of papers to throw out or whatever, whatever it is you have to do, but just get yourself into, I'm going to do it. And then just take that first aspect of it and just allow the self to flow through it. Yeah. There is no try. It's just do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yoda. <laughs> yeah. I think this yeah, is something yeah. I can just talk about and talk about and talk about. Yeah. 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 Cause then also when you think about it, there's this other aspect of it that impulse control. Mm. But then, you know, we don't have a good memory because we don't because we're multitasking and because we have input, like this stuff is all related, this impulse control. So it's like, okay, so I have to leave everything on the counter so that I can remember it because I'm always multitasking and I'm not having impulse control. And so, and then I end up creating more clutter for myself by, by doing something like this. Like I'm just seeing this whole circular thing that actually leads to having an even more poor memory <laughs> or more poor impulse control. And, and actually, you know what? That's Maybe one of the most important things to do is breathe and go into your heart space because then you're grounded and you become present in the moment instead of being pulled in a hundred different directions you, by breathing. That's why we always start off with that breathing and starting in your heart, then you are present, you know, like you're, you're grounded in that moment and it does give you that yeah okay i'm picking up the pen i'm going to move it from here to here and then i've got another thing and and that's how you start to do those tasks by being centered and being in your heart space and that brings in that whole idea of mindfulness and finding joy and completing the task of hey i've moved my pen over here i've cleaned a dish i've gotten rid of excess papers but I think it's being, if we're, if we're centered, if we're in our, our heart center, we can, um, we can, we can overcome those inability to, or that ability to procrastinate and not look at it. Just, you know, like breathe, be in the heart and just like, yeah, touch your heart. And you're going to, as soon as you do that, you're bringing yourself in and then you can uh, you're not pulled in a million directions. You're just being in that moment. Yeah, most definitely. Well, we're going to end it here because I'm telling you, I could just go, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is a trigger. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed that meditation and I'm really, I'm really relaxed. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Could you hear it? Did I hear what? Sound. Mm -mm. Because the the actual the I was interesting the icon disappeared. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Sound icon, yeah. the musician thing. So it was like I was looking. Uh -huh. I'm like, hmm, gone. Okay. We're just gonna well, be. It was just as powerful. But there was, and this is where we say, if a tree falls in the forest does it still make sound so yeah there's, there's still the frequencies and still riding away you may not hear it 
but it's still receiving it's, and it's still and there. Yeah. Vibrations are flowing. So, yeah. I'll have to track with the harmonica next week, too. But, yes. All right. We'll see you next time. Have a, have a, have a wonderful day and week. Much luck. Take care.